In this example, um, we're uh, given some key features of a parabola, uh, such as its y-intercept uh, and its vertex and its uh, x-intercepts. And uh, what we want to do is choose a uh, good viewing rectangle uh, for uh, making a, a, a graph of this parabola. So remember, a viewing rectangle is also sometimes referred to uh, as a graphing window. Uh, and a graphing window uh, consists of two parts. Um, those parts are the x window. So that's the portion of the x axis that we're going to include in our graph. And then a y window, uh, that's the portion of the y uh, axis we're going to include uh, in the graph. So let's think about what portion of the x axis we would like to um, uh, draw and what portion of the y axis we would like to draw when we uh, uh, make a graph of this particular parabola. Now let's start with the x window first. So um, we're told here that we have x intercepts at minus 1 and minus 5. And uh, so we want to include those, uh, we want to make sure that we include those uh, key features of the parabola uh, in our graph. Uh, so um, um, when we draw our x-axis, uh, we can't start the x-axis at um, any value above uh, minus 5, uh, because then we wouldn't be showing this x-intercept. And likewise, then, we can't stop the uh, x-axis at any uh, value below minus 1, uh, because otherwise we wouldn't show this uh, larger x-intercept uh, minus 1. So um, Let's start the x-axis, just to give ourselves a little bit of room on the left here, let's start the x-axis at minus 6. Um, and then uh, let's go up to, say, um, 0 uh, on the x-axis. So notice that um, uh, if you start the x-axis at minus 6 and you go up to 0, uh, that would show both of the uh, uh, x-intercepts. That would also, by the way, uh, uh, allow us to show the y-axis, and that's important. Remember, the y-axis uh, is at uh, x equals 0. Uh, and that's important because we also want to be able to see the y-intercept um, as part of this graph. Uh, you may also want to give yourself a, a little bit of additional room uh, on the uh, right to see the y-axis. So instead of uh, stopping the uh, uh, x window at 0, uh, you could also stop the X window a little bit bigger than zero, maybe uh, say at one. In fact, I think I like that better. So let me change this uh, upper bound um, on our X axis to uh, uh, positive one. Now, uh, the third uh, number here in the X window is just indicates the scale uh, uh, that we're going to use uh, for the X axis. And that means the separation of the tick marks. Uh, along the x-axis. Since our lower bound and upper bound uh, uh, on the x-axis, we're going to start the x-axis at minus 6 and terminate it at, at, at 1. Uh, those numbers are relatively close together, so we can use a fairly small scale there, uh, maybe of 1. Uh, so we could separate our tip marks by 1 unit, and that wouldn't give us too many tick marks to draw because minus 6 and 1, uh, those numbers are fairly close together. All right, now what about for our y window? What portion of the y-axis uh, should we draw? Well, uh, we want to be able to see the y-intercept, of course, uh, but we also want to make sure that we see the vertex. Oh, by the way, I should have noted that uh, when I was uh, choosing my uh, uh, x window. Uh, notice that minus 3, the x-coordinate of the vertex, that's uh, uh, well within this uh, interval that we're uh, uh, going to be graphing, uh, that we're going to be drawing on the x-axis, right? Minus 3 is between minus 6 and 1. Uh, that's good, so we have a chance there of uh, seeing the vertex uh, in our graphing window. Uh, now, uh, uh, what else, uh, uh, how would we choose the y window to make sure that we see the uh, the vertex and then also the y-intercept? Well, that means we're going to have to start the, um, uh, uh, the y-axis down uh, no more uh, than negative 4, uh, because uh, if we started uh, above minus 4 on the y-axis, uh, if we used uh, a number above uh, minus 4 as a lower bound uh, for our y-axis, then we wouldn't be able to see the vertex. And likewise, we're going to have to go up at least as high as 5 on the y-axis, um, because otherwise we won't see the y-intercept. So um, let's say uh, for a y-window, let's start at minus 5. I could really start at minus 4, but let's give ourselves a little bit of room here uh, below the um, vertex. And then um, let's go up to, say, a number a little bit bigger than uh, 5. Um, 
oh, maybe uh, uh, seven or so uh, on the y-axis so that we can make sure that we see the y-intercept. Now, uh, we could use a scale also on the y-axis of one. Uh, these uh, uh, upper and lower bounds on the y-axis are not too far apart, uh, but that would give us uh, 12 or 13 tick marks to draw. So I think it'd be easier maybe if we use a scale of two and that would maybe give us only six or seven tick marks uh, that we have to draw. So for my y window, I'm going to use uh, start. I'm going to start the y axis at minus five. I'm going to go up to seven on the y axis and then separate the tick marks by uh, two units. So I think this would uh, this graphing window would give us a uh, a good graph for this uh, a parabola that has these uh, key features.